Ryan. Welcome back to another episode of Saturday Sweets. For those of you that are new here, my name's Ryan. I'm a full-time working mom. I have an eight-month-old son, and my husband and I live here in the suburbs of Chicago. In these Saturday Sweet videos, I like to show you guys what I bake for the week for my family. I typically try to bake on the weekends um, when we can all be sort of around and spend a little bit more time in the kitchen. Uh, today, I'm going to be making a recipe out of this Taste of Home Fall magazine, if you want to call it that. I think it's a little bit a little bit more like a cookbook magazine hybrid. But the recipe we're gonna be making is a peanut butter chipper recipe. It's basically a peanut butter chocolate chip cookie recipe. And would you believe I have actually never made peanut butter chocolate chip cookies? I've made thousands of chocolate chip cookies and hundreds of peanut butter cookies, but I've never actually thought to put the two together. Um, I debated about filming this because this recipe is so simple that any basic home cook probably has done this. But then I thought, well, if I've never had the like brainstorm to put them together, maybe you guys haven't either. So I figured it was worth um, showing you and it's also what I'm making for my family this weekend. So I will go ahead and take you along for the ride. Uh, let me go ahead and show you guys the magazine recipe as well as the ingredients you're gonna need. Hey guys, as I mentioned, this is the place that I'm getting this recipe from. It's the Taste of Home Fall Recipes. I don't even know what to call this. I guess it technically is a magazine, although it's a little bit um, thicker, I think, than a magazine and also more expensive. Um, anyway, it is this peanut butter chippers recipe. And here it is. I got a kick out of it. It especially says reduced fat peanut butter is not recommended. <laughs> like, okay, noted. Uh, so here's what you're going to need for this one. It is a really, really, really standard recipe. You are going to need six tablespoons of butter, um, white sugar, brown sugar, the peanut butter and egg, um, and then salt, vanilla, baking soda, then you're going to add your flour, and then last but not least, a cup of milk chocolate chips. Um, these are a little bit splurgy, these Ghirardelli chips, but I swear to God, they are like the best thing ever. So if you guys want to treat yourself, um, I, I actually think they make a big enough difference that they're worth the increased price from like Nestle Toll House or something. So, um, Okay, we're gonna get started. I'm gonna pop the butter in with the sugars and cream those for like five minutes. Okay, so to get started on this one, you are going to cream together six tablespoons of butter, a fourth of a cup of peanut butter, and then a half a cup of light brown sugar as well as a half a cup of regular white sugar. You're gonna put that all into your mixing bowl and let it run for, I let it run usually honestly for about five minutes just until it's light and fluffy. And then after that, we'll get started adding the rest of our ingredients. this going for a couple minutes I'm gonna scrape down the sides and then turn it back on it's important to remember to scrape down the sides so that you can make sure all of your ingredients are getting well combined and you don't have anything you know stuck to the edges that isn't gonna have every ingredient mixed in so I'll get this started on high again and let it run for another two or three minutes you guys can tell I've now had this running for about five minutes and it's completely changed in color it is now light and fluffy and is much much lighter than when we initially put in the butter and the peanut butter and the sugar so I am now going to go ahead and beat in the vanilla um, it is one teaspoon of vanilla extract um, I actually love this Nielsen Massey it costs an arm and a leg but I do really think it makes a difference so if you guys need something as a present, uh, ask for fancy vanilla. Um, I do think it makes a big difference over like the McCormick brand though in your cookies. And you do use obviously like a teaspoon at a time. So maybe you can justify it in your head that way. Uh, and then you're also gonna use one egg. So you're gonna wanna crack your egg in, put your vanilla in, and then get this back on to mix together. Okay. Then you wanna add your dry ingredients. If you were being fancy, I am sure you would sift these together before you put them in. Um, I don't have time for that, and I never do that. 
Tell me, comment in the description box if you guys think it makes a difference in baking. Maybe I'll consider doing it. Um, okay, so you're gonna need a half a teaspoon of baking soda. And then you will need a quarter teaspoon of salt. Um, actually, remind me to tell you sometime about the sifting story. My husband would go on a rant for 20 years about the sifting story. I was making a cake, oh God, and I just dumped a whole bunch of extra. I actually probably just put in like an eighth of a teaspoon, so I'm only gonna put in a tiny bit more. This is what happens when you're chatting and baking. Um, anyway, we were making a Christmas cake and I was convinced I was gonna do it right and do it perfectly, so I made my husband sift, oh my gosh, like cups and cups worth of dry ingredients together. And um, basically, long story short, the cake was terrible. It never, it didn't like come together, so we had to throw it out and we actually tried doing it twice. So <laughs> he sifted like cups and cups and cups of things uh, only to have it thrown out. and. I think the uh, experience has scarred us both, so neither of us will be sifting anything in the future. All right, you're then going to go ahead and add um, a cup and a half of, or excuse me, a cup and a fourth of all-purpose flour to this mixture. Um, after you add this, I'm sure you know you don't want to mix it um, a lot because you'll develop the gluten in the flour and it will make your cookies tough. So just mix it quickly to combine once you put the flour in. is you're gonna add one cup of your milk chocolate chips. I have a chunk of unmixed ingredients on the side here I wanna get in and then I'm gonna do a quick scrape. And then get my chips in. mixture is now done. You're going to want to get this off the beater and then we are going to drop these by about a tablespoonful onto baking sheets and then get them in a 350 degree oven for about 11 to 14 minutes. I will go ahead and get these onto the pan. I'll show you guys that, get them in the oven, and then I will give you guys a taste test of these because I'm hungry and I want to try one. So I'll let you know what I think of them when they come out of the oven. out there riddle me this do you guys ever get as many cookies out of a recipe as they claim they're gonna make so I just finished scooping out the dough on these cookies and I have three six nine eighteen so I have two trays of nine cookies 18 cookies and the recipe claims this is gonna make three and a half dozen like I yes my cookies are probably a little bit bigger than the recipe recommends like this said a, a rounded tablespoon full these are a little generous but does anyone actually ever make the three and a half dozen that a recipe claims they're gonna make? Like, let me know in the comments down below because I'd really be fascinated to know. I don't think I've ever once made a baking recipe and come up with the amount of cookies or bars or whatever that I'm supposed to. So let a girl know. All right, back to baking. Okay guys, the peanut butter chippers are out of the oven and I'm not gonna lie, they look delicious. So I'm gonna give a quick taste test for you. Hmm. Uh, I'm not gonna lie, but it's one of the best cookies I've ever made. Uh, I will for sure be cutting out this recipe and keeping it. Any keeper recipes I have end up in my binder and this is for sure going to be a cut and put in the binder because this is delicious. I literally have nothing I would change about this recipe. Um, two thumbs up for me. Totally a winner. All right. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode of Saturday Sweets. Bye.